On July 4, 1845, a friend of Emerson's, Henry David Thoreau, moved to Walden Pond, about two miles from Concord. He built a small cabin and lived there until September of 1847. His experiment in living here was little known in his own time, but came eventually to have a profound influence worldwide. In Walden, the book he created from his experiences here, he wrote, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. He was opposed to the slavish materialism that even then was beginning to emerge in American life. He was less interested in the self-made man than in the self-made soul. Simplicity, 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 cried. Along with Emerson, he believed that divinity lay within one's soul and in nature, and that a person could be totally free and fulfilled if this divinity were developed and given expression. For Thoreau, the true America had not yet been discovered. He tried to awaken men and women to their true potential. He wrote, I learned this, at least, by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Why should we be in such desperate haste to succeed and in such desperate enterprises? If men would steadily observe realities only, life, to compare it with such things as we know, would be like a fairy tale and the Arabian Nights. Money is not required to buy one necessary of the soul. While Thoreau was living at Walden, the United States was at war with Mexico. Thoreau was arrested for refusing to pay his poll tax, which was his way of demonstrating against a government that supported slavery and a war that many considered unjust. He spent only one night in jail, but the experience so enraged him that he wrote his great essay, Civil Disobedience. How does it become a man to behave toward this American government today, he asked. I cannot for an instant recognize that political organization as my government, which is the slave's government also. Civil disobedience deeply influenced many others who shared Thoreau's intense desire for freedom, including Mahatma Gandhi, who struggled so fiercely for the independence of India. Martin Luther King Jr. cited it often during the civil rights movement of the 1960s, as did the activists who protested the war in Vietnam. With Thoreau, they all shared the belief that individual conscience supersedes civil law when it conflicts with a higher moral law. Thoreau believed the state exists for the sake of the individual, not the other way around. He wrote, There will never be a really free and enlightened state until the state comes to recognize the individual as a higher and independent power from which all its own power and authority are derived and treats him accordingly. Henry David Thoreau